Okay, well, I have a lot to talk about, and I, I don't know how I'm going to even get through everything that I have to talk about. When it comes to rollerblade setups, I've been through a ton over the past couple of months. I think I've finally settled on my favorite rollerblade setups to date. And for a while, I was on the Them 908, and I was riding Them frames, and then Intuition V2 liners in those bad boys. As awesome as they were, I still had some achy feet by the end of the day, some foot pain, some pressure points, blah, blah, blah. They were lighter, which was awesome. They fit closer to my foot, which was awesome. However, my feet would just hurt after a long period of time. I think it was just a hair too tight. So I went back to the 909. And I love the 909s, I always have. My biggest problem was when I put the Intuition V2 in there, there's too much space. And I know the stock them liners fill out the shell a little more, but I would kill those super fast. I would actually wear holes in like this part of the them stock liner. However, these are Intuition liners and they're actually made for them skates, like the Danny Beers. Intuitions in general <laughs> last forever. I honestly don't remember the Danny Beers 10 to 10.5 liner being as thick, but I find that these them Intuition size 10 to 10.5 fill out the 909 perfectly for me. Without the footbed in it, I could ride in these all day. These are super comfortable. Them 909 in the medium shell. Went back to Featherlight 3s. Makes the setup a lot lighter. Moonshine UMHD UM UM UHWM Ugh UHMW anti rockers. These are 60mm 90A undercover wheels with the Oak City Skate Shop logo on it. And they have the Bones Swiss bearings. Amazing, amazing, amazing. Um, also the Keikoa straps, I think that's how you say it. These things are incredible. They weigh about 154, and for my weight, these things hold me in nice and snug, and they make the setup lighter, and they add just a little bit more flex to the cuff, which is it's perfect on the skate for me. In my personal opinion, it's perfect for me. Also got the laced laces, which are incredible. I love them. Oh yeah, these are the, the Moopy uh, shells. They have the new them sole, which is amazing. I wouldn't say they're that much wider than the regular V2. Um, I also noticed that they kind of wear the same as the regular V2. I forgot just how much I love these sole plates. They slide so good. The curve and everything and the low surface area just makes them slide really nice. I guess I do wish they wouldn't wear down as fast, but I don't know. They're not expensive soles, so to replace them is not that hard. And I'm sure very soon these wider soles are just gonna be available to buy separately. I will say though, that the new backside groove is perfect. I love it. I like the old one, but this one just takes away that little hook right there, and it just makes them so good for torques, royals, unities. I feel like I've always noticed with 909s, the flex, is awesome for groove tricks, unities, things like that. Um, it's just a consistent flex. It's not too loose, it's not too stiff. It's, uh, for me, it's just right, especially with the Keikoa straps and the Intuition liners. I just have so much fun in this skate. I was messing around with the Tim Franken God Soul plates and those are awesome. I may try to mod them to these 909s if I can get the size. Right now I can't seem to find the right size. So I'm hoping that the 10 to 10.5 sole plate would fit perfectly on here with the Justin Thursday plate. Anyways, if not, still love this setup. Love it. Look at that thing. Oh, I love it, love it, love it, love it. This whole setup is by far one of my favorite setups of all time. Obviously that's pretty much the same exact setup as this. Um, these are also Featherlight 3s, but these are the undercover Bernal wheels, which are also 60 millimeter 90A. In these right now, I'm testing the Rollerblade ILQ9, highly recommended by Matthew. 
so far, I love them. They have six bigger bearing balls in there. And so far they roll really smooth. When I spin them, they don't spin as long, but they roll really smooth. I'm curious to see how these are gonna stack up over the Swiss bearings. The 909 is a little bit on the heavier side, but not bad, especially with these frames and wheels. These are just generic laces that I got on Amazon that are very similar to the laced. I would say the laced ones probably hold up a little better. Kikoa strap and this color scheme. This is the same color scheme as the Solomon ST9, um, which I had, or the ST9 Pro. I can't remember exactly which one. It was a tan boot with the white frame and the black liner with the white trim. Ugh, man, I miss those skates so much. At least in my head, they're my favorite skates ever. How they would stack up. Nowadays, I don't know, I haven't ridden an ST9 from Solomon in forever. Everybody says they're still holding up and they're incredible. Definitely one of my favorite roller blades. Love them, love them, love them. I feel like I can skate in these all day. Something that I feel like people uh, forget to mention about the 909, I'm gonna mention it right now, is the hardware. The hardware on this boot is awesome. The 909 uses a bridge hardware that keeps the sole onto the shell. Also, you can see that there's no UFS bolts inside the shell. Also, the bridge hardware lies flat. So there is no hardware bumps inside this shell. The actual UFS bolts are inside the sole plate, in between the boot and the sole plate. So we got the bridge hardware. Look at the cuff bolt. There is the inside of the cuff bolt. Look at the strap hardware. Can you see the strap hardware on both sides? Not only do all those receivers lie flush with the shell, so that they're not bumping out and hitting your liner, but none of them have that teeth thing that bites into the shell so that it doesn't spin. It doesn't need it. The bridge hardware is not gonna spin. It doesn't have to have that plastic bitey bite in thing. The cuff hardware fits in a square slot so that it won't spin. Same thing on that side. And the cuff bolt hardware doesn't need to be like that. That's not gonna spin. And you can also adjust the height of your cuff. When I'm playing around with different setups and messing with things, taking the frames off, taking the soles off, blah, 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 blah. I feel like that really goes a long way. The hardware in the 909s is just amazing. I just feel like that makes these stand out. I know the Tim Frankens, they're, the hardware in there is all, just about all the teeth hardware that bites into the plastic. Um, and then, you know, to put it back together, it's just a challenge. I feel like these just kind of, it just kind of fits right together. It's it's awesome. So anyways, another reason why I love these skates. Futek hardware holding the uh, Keikoa straps in. Forgot to mention that. Love that as well. I don't think the Danny Beer had this kind of grippy thing. See that grippy thing? And then I think the Danny Beer did have the little dots here. It also seems like the bottom has more of those little dots that help the liner not slip around on the inside. Also, I don't remember the Danny Beer having holes right here to breathe, or no, was it on top? I don't know. The Danny Beer definitely didn't have as much ventilation as these do, from what I remember. And again, even with the 10 to 10.5 liner here, there's just a little extra cush, I feel like, all around, and it just fills out that 909 for me. It's perfect. I feel like I've settled on the 909 as one of my top favorite rollerblades of all time. So you might be saying, well, all you like is them skates. All you talk about is them skates, them skates, them skates, them skates. You don't try anything else. Ah, I have. I've had, I've had Majestic 12s in the right shell size for my foot. Unfortunately, hurts my foot. I also tried the fifth element. They're wider, nicer, heavier than I'd like. The cuff wasn't my favorite, the support, I, I don't know. I was just missing that support of the them skates. In the past, I've also had the sways with the crown liners. Just too much forward flex. I felt like I was falling out of them. So you might go back and look at my video that I did on the sways and say, well, you took the power strap off and um, you didn't lace everything up 
on liners. I actually did try doing that off film and I felt like the flex didn't change much. The forward support was just like, it was like nothing. I just, I feel like a little bit of forward support's nice if you land a little too far forward, it can kind of catch you and help you back. I also tried the Tim Frankens. Loved it, the shell size was just a little bit too tight. It was squishing my foot. Ugh, I tried, I heat molded my liners. I also heat molded the shell. I was kind of starting trying to stretch the shell out. Um, I couldn't get into budge enough to where I felt like I could skate in those things all day. Now, with that being said, I have found another rollerblade that is not a them skate that I absolutely love and will name one of my favorite rollerblades of all time. And that, of course, is the Adapt Brutality. This aggressive rollerblade really stands out. Again, I have to mention when I first got these, I thought they would not fit. I was like, nope, there's no way. I got the wrong size. Peter and the Adapt Masterclass videos helped me realize there's a couple things that I could do to make them fit better. One, heat mold. These skates love to be heat molded. So I did that and that helped. Number two, lacing. On adapt skates, you have the ability to lace all the way up. What I think a lot of people don't know is that there's actually sections of lace. Um, it's all one lace, yes. You potentially could do different laces for each section. That could work. But you don't have to tighten everything the same. So for me, the toe box was the problem on these skates. I was scared that it would never break in. In one of the Adapt Masterclass videos, it shows you that you can lace different sections differently. If the toe box is too tight, well, don't tighten the laces as much in the toe box. That definitely helped. Or if you're getting too much heel lift, tighten the midsection right here. And if your forward flex is not enough, don't tighten the laces at the top as much. Or even cooler, use different hole patterns when lacing. You know, if you're feeling like it's maybe cutting in right here, well then, then don't lace through that hole, skip it and go up another one. There's a ton of ways that you can lace these so that they suit your skating style more. I skipped this hole right here and went to the top. And that completely changed how I felt about the flex on these skates. At first, I felt like the flex was cutting in to my ankle too much. And somehow, just skipping this hole right here made a huge, huge difference. And the Masterclass videos mentioned the number one way to get these to fit better to your foot. It's probably the most fun way to get them to fit better to your foot. And that's just skating them. At this point, these things fit like a glove. I've maybe been skating them for a month, if even, five sessions maybe. Perfect fit. No pressure points. There is nothing about them that I can think of that is uncomfortable. Yeah, most comfortable rollerblade for me. Peter even mentioned that I could go down a size and it would still fit comfortably. Probably get an even better ride out of these things, but I'm totally fine with how this thing fits. Knobuck leather, I think it's called. This leather is designed to conform to your foot. It stretches. It's incredible. <laughs> now, originally I ended up getting these without the 45 degree strap, but I ended up adding them because I was just curious how that would help with locking in my heel and maybe not having to worry about the mid lace section as much. Yeah, it works. It's awesome. I, I can get in and out of these skates so quickly and I could still have the support with very, very, very little heel lift, which is exactly how I like it. And you're gonna get mad at me. The flex is still not my favorite. It's it's loose at the top, which is nice for once you get on top sides and, and things like that. But there's a hard stop. Depending on how you lace and tie these things, there is like a, a hard stop at one point where it just, it holds you in. You're not gonna flex anymore. Um, you can, but it's it gets uncomfortable to push forward on them anymore. Um, that's not a big deal. And I'm sure there's more lace combinations that I haven't even tried yet. Um, that would change that. You can customize these things like crazy. Each pair is handmade, but it does take a lot longer to get them. If you were to pair this with their frames and wheels, it's gonna be really expensive. I know that the 909 Riders Complete are like 500 bucks. These are gonna be even more than that. Do I feel like the extra expense is not worth it? No, these are, uh, the quality is insane. The quality is so good. The hardware is amazing. Just, I mean, just everything is just so 
good. Even the footbed is incredible that comes with these skates. So I understand the price, especially since they're handmade. These are the Dialene, Dialene, Dio, something with a D. It's not the carbon fiber. Um, still very stiff and they're very light. This setup is about five ounces lighter than the 909 setup. And then the Symmetrix frame is super light as well. It was just a little bit heavier than the feather lights. The only reason why I didn't stick with the Symmetrix frame is that I ride anti-rocker and I feel like those are definitely flat frames and I didn't like the groove. The groove I had a hard time with. I could have skated them longer and worn in the groove, but I feel like for a frame that's over $100, I just, I don't know. These are so cheap. Featherlight 3s are super cheap. They slide decent and they're extremely light. And I just like that groove that you just start with. It's for anti-rocker, it's, it's like perfect. This is an amazing rollerblade. Two favorite skates right now. 909, Adapt Brutale. I also wanted to thank a ton of people. Matthew, this guy, his channel, he is awesome. He has helped me so much with all my crazy gear questions. Um, his channel on YouTube is Matthew Does Stuff. His videos are awesome, they're in black and white, and he's such a good skater. Also, Jamie M and uh, Roll Over the Hill, they're incredible. Um, they've just been so awesome. They both did the Skate League Challenge. Also, Chris has filmed me with his GoPro a few times, which I'm so thankful of because I don't have a lot of those shots. 30 and Rollin. 30 and Rolling really helped my channel a lot. He featured one of my videos and so grateful for that and honored. Tree Tree, who <laughs> made me a pair of cardboard rollerblades that are in the mail right now, which I cannot wait to skate. Brandon D. Brandon D featured me on his YouTube channel too, and so I'm so thankful for that. I believe he's also the owner of Lace Laces, which are my favorite laces ever for rollerblades. Keikoa for being so awesome and making these incredible straps. Fruit Tech for the best stinking hardware ever. Love their hardware. Um, keep rolling. Love that guy's channel. He's just, just amazing. The Blading Physio, he's awesome. He's helped me so many times when I've had injuries and things like that. Um, what I should be doing. Um, so super huge thank you and shout out to him. Justin Thursday, he made me a custom part to fit 909s and 908s with raised heels onto sole plates that are flat. So awesome and it worked super good. I have plans to put my 909 on some Tim Franken sole plates. I just gotta find them in the right size and I will be using that adapter plate. Anti-gravity workshop for making incredible shirts. Love your shirts so much. And of course, last but not least, Oak City Skate Shop. Oak City Skate Shop is amazing. Amazing, amazing. Long is incredible. He's so awesome, so helpful. I think out of all the people I've mentioned so far, I think I bug him the most. So I appreciate you, Long. Thank you so much for all your help. And everyone else that's helped me, I'm just so grateful for your help. I'm gonna say thank you to my lovely wife. I think she's in the living room right now, probably rolling her eyes, but I love her. And I also love my dog, Rowan, and all my family and friends. I am having an absolute blast rollerblading, and I'm just so thankful um, that I can still do it. And I'm so thankful for everybody's help and advice. And if I didn't mention you, I'm sorry, but thank you. <laughs> Stay tuned for some more videos. I think I hit everything I wanted to hit in this one. Oh, one last thing. I'm going snowboarding soon and I got these 32 lashed boots, which what, have intuition liners in them. Other than the double boa system here, uh, I'm pretty sure that's what sold me on these boots. And yeah, they are super comfortable. Intuition liners are incredible, even in snowboard boots. I imagine they're the same for ski boots. Them skates are amazing. Adapt skates are amazing. Everyone that I spoke with at Adapt has been incredible. Um, so helpful. So thank you to them. Thank you guys, thanks for watching. Thanks for subscribing. I don't know how to end this video.